Now, one of the mistakes I did make when purging in the past was I left myself without a... So I have purged the heck out of my craft room. Not once, twice, but three times. And finally, I am super satisfied with what is in my craft room. So what did I keep? Here is the stamps edition. Okay, so one of the things that I definitely kept in my stash were sentiments that were really truly unique and different. You can see by the looks of these stamps how often I've used them, the kind words and wings of hope from Altenew. They just have really unique, super heartfelt sentiments that I've just never really found anywhere else. Some more things I love are sentiments with really big, bold fonts and sizes, and the reason because I create a lot of backgrounds, a lot of ink blended backgrounds, a lot of backgrounds with pastes and things like that. And I find having really large sentiments just make for an easy completion of the card. There's also a bonus if the sentiment has coordinating tiny sentiments like this one from Waffle Flower. And I also love buying little um, sentiments to go along with each occasion. Now, I only have one of these types of sentiments for each occasion of stamps that I own. For example, the Biddy Birthday Wishes for My Favorite Things. Anything, sorry, a happy birthday stamp, I can add this to it and just make it a little bit more personal and a little bit more heartfelt. And overall, these here are just great additions. I kept some of my stamps that I find are truly unique. So for example, this one from The Ton, this is the fill in sentiments. Um, they have the uh, space here so that you could add in some of these little words inside of the word. I thought that was really unique. And I love this one from Heffy Doodle, the down the line sentiments, because it gives me a vertical sentiment, which I rarely see out there. And sometimes you just don't have a lot of space left on a card and this one comes in handy. I find that a lot of stamps kind of have the same fonts over and over again, and I really love the fonts from Penguin Palace. I feel like they offer something a little bit different. I love that there's a variety in their sentiments, so you have like big bold brush lettering, scripty font that looks handwritten, capital letters, lowercase letters, some standard fonts. I just love the variety. Humorous stamps are a definite go-to for me. So things like the ways to say let's drink from Picket Fence Studios or emphatic from Simon Says Stamp. I absolutely love the boldness. I love the you're ridiculously thoughtful. Your awesomeness is boundless. I love the words chosen on this one. I love any stamp that Kathy Zilski makes. I think they're so amazing. The other one I love is the I love you like Netflix. I love you like French fries, those kind of things. That's a really good one. I'll put that in the link below as well. Um, this one here, just funny. I have a lot of friends that would really appreciate a funny sentiment and I really love a little bit of a different humor in my cards as well. Any stamps that help with the insides of my stamps are a go-to for me as well. I find the insides of cards, which I'll have a video on in a few weeks, are sometimes the hardest things to find. And I love the ones that are a little bit longer that say a little bit more because it'll help us as well to not have to write so much in a card and it helps complete the card as well. I always have a stamp set or two for my crafty friends, um, mainly because I love to send them the cards the most. I know they appreciate them so much and it's fun to exchange cards. And so I love having crafty friend themed stamps, but obviously I don't need a ton of them. So I kept one or two in my stash and I think that's more than enough, but definitely a must have for me. Having a stamp that will help me decorate my envelopes is also something that I really love. And I love all of these different sentiments for snail mail, including the snail, I think is just super cute. And of course, decorating your envelopes just takes your cards to another level and makes it even more special for the receiver. Quick and easy sentiments that I can grab in a second. So these ones here are from Tailored Expressions. And you, what you do is you stamp this whole background stamp once, you die cut them all at the same time. And I like to keep them in my little go-to drawer of sentiments. You can see here I have a little cup full of extra things I didn't end up using on cards. Love to keep those sentiments in there for when I just need a quick one. I love that hers are themed, so a friendship, birthday, Christmas, whatever. So I cut one of each, stick them in my drawer and they're or my jar and they're all ready to go. 
Okay, the last one for me for the sentiments is a an alphabet stamp set that you don't have to stamp super straight on your cardstock. So I find a lot of alphabet stamps, you have to really line them up. You've got to be drawing lines or using a ruler and then the clear stamps stick to your fingers and then they are just really irritating to use sometimes. And so I love this bold and brushy set from Concord and Ninth because you can just really stamp freehand. They don't need to be super perfect. And the little lines that come out of the stems or whatever you wanna call them, anyway, they are uh, really easy to then connect your next letter. Background stamps were something I kept most of, I think probably the most in my stash. These ones here I've used in so many different videos. I come to them over and over again, Doodle Garden and Kaleidoscope from Catherine Pooler. And then I also love really natural textures like a wood I feel like you need to have in your craft room. And although I definitely prefer cling stamps to clear stamps for backgrounds, this definitely does the trick. And I know they're not for everyone, but I kept most of my turnabout stamps as well. I just find them super fun, ways to get really colorful backgrounds, and I create them mostly in bulk, so I'll create maybe 10 of them at a time so that I only have to line them up kind of once in a while, and it makes it worth it. Now, one of the mistakes I did make when purging in the past was I left myself without a stamp that works for every occasion. So I think the last time I stamped, I ended up not having a stamp for weddings or anniversaries and for babies. And so this is one of my, even though it doesn't contain any of the sentiments, it's one of my favorites to use for baby cards. I think the koalas are absolutely adorable. You have these sort of mama and and child uh, koalas and they're just so cute for kids cards anything with a butterfly on it stayed in my stash because i absolutely love the look of any sort of butterflies on cards any sort of stamps with a lot of solid images i love ink blending backgrounds and adding a black image over top i think they look absolutely amazing so anything that kind of allows me to create really beautiful backgrounds with solid colors or add little fine sentiment or si fine symbols onto them i really really love now you all know I'm not a massive fan of coloring for my cards anyway, and so I love a good stamp set in which I can stamp a flower, stamp a solid inside of it, add maybe a little bit of layering, although for this one it's not even necessary, and be done with it. So another one of my favorite stamps in my stash are stamps like these ones. I kept a lot of the stamps in my stash where it looked like I used them a ton. Obviously, I've gotten a lot of use out of this one. I even created a video on five ways to create different cards with it. This is just a type of stamp that I could use for really so many different occasions and techniques. And so it's one of the ones that has stood the test of time in my craft stash. Lastly, I know again, not for everyone, are layered flowers. I think this is the most beautiful layering stamp I've ever, ever owned. And therefore I had to keep this one. This was one of a must have. And I'm also super into at the moment, the layered flowers from the ton. As you can see here from the squares and rectangles, they help you line up each of the layering stamps. And then they have a die cut that comes with it that cuts all of them at the same time. So you aren't stamping one layered stamp at a time and spending a lot of time on that. You're stamping four in this case, and then you're getting that all die cut, including leaves and botanicals all at the same time. It saves a ton of time and I think it's super convenient. If you enjoyed this video, then let me know in the comments below and I will consider making more based on the other supplies I have in my craft room like dyes or stencils and I'd be happy to continue this series. In the meantime, you are welcome to check out my video on stamps that make cards in five minutes. These are some of my favorites too.